Hey, one of my subscribers asked me about how I measure the resistance of my pickups. So, I mean, there's tons of videos on YouTube, but I thought I'd get my take on it. I, because I found a few links on the internet that were pretty interesting. One of them you can actually listen and listen to the effects different length cables have on your sound. You know, it's it's kind of a famous fact that Jimi Hendrix used those cheap little coily cables, which is, you know, this is a fancy white noise uh, coily cable. Not like his, which cut out a lot of highs and stuff, but, you know, Cables make a difference, and that one website I'll post uh, in the description talks or lets you listen to uh, different cables. I couldn't really hear a difference in the pickups. You can pick two pickups to compare the sound. It's kind of basic, but it was an interesting website that I'd never seen before. And the other one is a uh, guide on how many wire turns are in pickups from nine, Fender single coils from 1957 to... Nine, no, 1954 to 67 maybe. Anyway, that link's in the description too. But uh, kind of proud of my new clips, my new fluke alligator clips. See those babies? I've needed these for a long time. They're expensive though, so that's why I haven't bought them till now. For this crazy set, they want like I got them for fifty-eight dollars, but it's still expensive. Okay, well, let's start from scratch. Here's my meter. Got it set on ohms. Uh, here's the volume. Everything needs to be all the way up. I'll show you how the volume affects the ohm reading. And there's a little misconception, and even myself included, equated uh, ohm resistance or output to output of the pickup and that's not only one of the factors in pickup manufacture and uh, output is you know determined by type of magnet strength of the magnet and amount of coil uh, wire wraps or yeah, there's a lot of factors and it's fairly complicated but generally speaking the more resistance the hotter the output of the pickup but um, what you do this is the positive this is the negative the black and I just I plug in a guitar cord I used to think that the length of the guitar cord made a difference because there was resistance in the guitar cord but maybe because this white noise cord is such a good cord I didn't notice any difference but I used to use a short cord we'll just go with a short cord for now yeah, that doesn't really come out. I'll go with the long cord, the coily. You just take the other end of it, put your uh, your lead. That's the tip. It will be the hot. The black will be the ground. That's the sleeve. And you just hook them on there. Now you're getting a reading over here. You can see, hopefully, that it's 6.137. And that's the middle pickup. Now watch what happens when I turn the volume knob here. All of a sudden, uh, the resistance really starts to go wacky. Now it's really high. I mean, you would think that would mean that the pickup's putting more output out there but it's it's not I, I don't understand these readings but all I'm main thing I'm trying to show you is now it's all the way off you see it's reading 0.9 ohms it's grounded out so you always want to have your volume all the way up and there's a little bit of difference between reading the pickup when it's out of the guitar like this and I'll show you because you, you don't go through all the controls and everything. But I, I notice there's not a whole bunch of difference. So this is pretty accurate. So that's the middle pickup, 6.14. All I do is flip the switch over here to the neck. And that neck is reading 5.945. These are the pickups that I put in 
yesterday in the video. This is the Abigail Ybarra 1964. This is the Abigail Ybarra 1964. And this is a new Rumpelstiltskin middle pickup. Actually, it's the bridge pickup off of my Gypsy set. And I'll tell you what. I never really stuck with the middle pickup when I'm playing. <laughs> but this thing sounds good. And the combination is really interesting. Because this has enamel wire. This is form bar. Form bar. I can't see that. Either way, I've been playing the middle pickup a lot. It, this this pickup is real throaty sounding. It's pretty interesting. So it's got quite a few unique different tones coming out of this setup. But uh, as you can see, the neck, the Abigail Ybarra is 5.946. If I turn the volume, you can see how it goes wacky. Turn it all the way off, it shorts out to 1 ohm. So turn that back up. Middle is still 6.1. I tried to, these were actually matching the bridge and neck. I mean the neck and middle were matching before I put them in. So I'm not sure why the Abigail is a little bit lower than it was reading before it went in. The Rumpel is reading about the same. And then here's the bridge, and it was reading around 6.5 before I put it in. And now it's at 6.29. The in-between positions cut the resistance in half, and I'm assuming that's because you're going through both coils, and you have less resistance because you've got, I don't know, I, that's what Either way, that's the way it ends up. 3 ohms on the in-between positions and 3.14. So, does that equate to volume, output, tone? Not really. I mean, it's the type of magnets. The, you know, that's why you see Alnico 3, Alnico 5. So many different types of magnets. And the strength makes a big difference on the output of the the pickup and if you get these things too strong you know a strong magnet will produce more signal but it'll also pull on your strings and cause them to not sustain and go out of tune and stuff so there's a, a real fine balance there and I don't know the pickup manufacturers are pretty meticulous about figuring out that balance but yeah check out those websites uh, that's all I do uh, it's definitely got more output with the higher ohm reading. Sadly to say, I'm not so sure there isn't something wrong with this vintage pickup, and that's that's a sad state of affairs because these things are worth a lot of money. But uh, this guy must have been whoever EZ is. He was the winder at Fender, and it's his stamp right there. May have been in a hurry to go to lunch, and he cut the wires down on this thing. Uh, because it's, if you look at that chart that I put the link on, there's not one pickup that Seymour Duncan had taken apart and rewound and checked all these things. It gets down to the 5.33 ohms. They're all 5.8, 5.7, 6.1, which seems to be the normal range, anywhere from 7,900 something winds of wire in 64 to up to the 8,000 something. So they generally have, you know, seven, seven to 8,000 lines of wire. And this one looks like it must have been cut short somehow. Or it does have a short in it. My past experience has always been if there's a short in these things, it just stops working. But I don't know if it's really possible to have an internal short that cuts part of the coil out and have it still work that could be the case and in that case I would have to have it rewound which isn't the end of the world I mean they can do a good job on rewinding these things it might even sound better but let's check this one too this one's all you do is, it doesn't really matter which way you connect these things. It's You're still going to get the same reading, but I'll do it the way you probably 
technically should. The ground is black, so I'll go to the black ground wire. Go to the pull this wire back a little bit. Go to this one, and you can see that it's reading. Well, it's gone up a little bit. It's reading 5.407 which is pretty low and it was pretty mellow sounding but you know I played it for years like that and on a amp with fuzz going on and everything it, it sounds pretty good and you get quite a bit of feedback it's, uh, so this is my feedback guitar when I really want to do the Hendrix stuff but that was a long video I'll talk to you guys later hope this helps